Hallelujah. Just lift your hands and thank the Lord. Just thank him for what he has done. Thank him. Thank him. No wonder the writer in First John said, Oh, what manner of love is this? He couldn't comprehend this kind of love that has been bestowed on us. It's great. It is massive. What the Lord has done for us is a lot. It's massive. If we start talking about it from now to the next 20, 30, 40 years, you won't be able to fully understand it. Just thank the Lord. Holy, you are lifted. great praise this morning all creations bow to you Lord your name is the greatest all powers all throne all positions all authority Lord you sit on it all thank you mighty God thank you great king of the universe and the amazing thing Lord is you've transferred all of this to us your very own children you've called us your children we are beyond grateful thank you Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this retreat. What you're doing in our lives, you're changing us on a daily basis. We are very grateful. Thank you. Thank you, mighty God, spirit of the living God. Thank you for being here. The Bible says that you're our teacher. You're our instructor. We open up our hearts to your Holy Spirit. I ask tonight for understanding. I ask this morning for revelation. I ask this morning for light. Let revelation be an atmosphere in this place. Let it be the air that we breathe, Lord. Let understanding be the atmosphere in this place. In the name of Jesus, thank you. Let no one be locked out of light. Thank you, Father. We honor you, Holy Spirit. I thank you. I trust you for help today. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. We give God great praise. Amen. All right, let's take our seats. In the next few minutes, I just want to share, um, just pick it up from where Pastor Fred stopped. We'll look at a few things today and then move you from point A to point B. Well, you've already moved from point A to point B and we've been blessed in this retreat, right? God has been doing amazing things since last night and he's going to keep doing, he's going to get better every single session. You know, the truth is that the greatest attack on your life the greatest attack on the church as a whole and on your life, the greatest of all the attacks is not your finance. The greatest attack is not your health. Even if you're sick, you have, I don't know what the disease is, cancer, whatever it is. That is not the greatest attack. The greatest attack on your life is not your marital attack. Maybe the devil is after you're married, whatever. That's not the greatest attack. No, all of these things are not they are nothing. They are the minutest of problems on planet earth. The greatest attack on the church and the greatest attack on your life, you need to know what it is. Because if you do not know what it is, you will be fighting the wrong war. You'll be fighting the wrong battle because you don't even understand what the attack is about. So you have to understand, the Bible tells us that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, all of those things. We already know the scripture, Ephesians chapter 6. But what is that particular, what are those things, what are they wrestling? They are not after your money. They are not after your car. They are not after your destiny. They are not after the things you think they are after. That's not what they are attacking. The greatest attack on the church and the greatest attack on you is one thing only. 
from that major thing, from that thing that the enemy targets, he cannot have access to every other thing. So if you're able to stop that attack, the main attack, you automatically stop all the other things. So the major thing that the enemy is attacking is, the, the Bible calls it, Jesus told us, is called deception. That's the greatest attack on the church is the greatest attack on you. What is deception? Let me help you simplify it. Deception is an attack on the thinking process. Deception is an attack on your mental pattern. Deception is an attack on your belief system. He goes after your thought process. He goes after your belief system. And you know, this sentence won't be so serious to you until you realize that the entire Christian faith, your work with God is based on your belief system. The Bible tells us that we walk by faith and not by sight. In other words, everything we are doing with God, we have to believe things we cannot see. In other words, we have to believe God from a place of the mind. Your mind has to believe God. Your spirit has to believe God. For instance, we say God is here, but you can't see God. So what the enemy does, first of all, is to target your belief system. That's the first thing he does. He targets your thinking pattern. He targets that area. The moment he has access to your thinking pattern, the moment he has access to that area, your belief system, your faith life, he has won the battle. The moment he does that, then every other thing is a walkover. That is the first attack. And that's what we're going to take a look at in the scripture. And actually, for the enemy to be able to accomplish this fact, he had to go through a transition. Maybe we should look at uh, Revelation chapter 12. That would be a good place to start. Let's, Revelation 12, let's look at verse 9. For him to be able to succeed in doing this attack, he went through a transition. The way we met him in Genesis chapter 3, which is when we were first introduced to the enemy, is not the way we meet him in Revelation. The man had grown. He had gone through a transition and is all dealing with the same thing. So the Bible tells us in this scripture, he said, this great dragon, the ancient serpent, he's telling you a transition has occurred. He said, in the past, he started as a serpent. But as we're meeting him now, the Bible says he's a great dragon. The same man that was a serpent in Genesis 3. So that's what they explained to us. They said, this great dragon, in case you are confused about who he is, he's the ancient serpent. So he started as a serpent, mild, small. You know what a serpent is. But the Bible says that he kept on increasing and he got to a point where he became a dragon. The Bible said, in case you are still confused, he's called the devil or Satan. And then he goes on. He said, the one deceiving the whole world. So his number one purpose is what? Deceiving the whole world. He said he was thrown down to the earth with all his angels. Let's see what happens in verse 10. So he says to us, he said, Then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens. It has come at last. Salvation, power, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his Christ. Why? He said, For the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to the earth. They're talking about the same person. They said, The one who accuses them day and night. Now, did you see the transition the, the, the devil made? First, he was a serpent. He became a dragon, number one. The second transition is, first of all, if you read the one we read in, the, in verse 9, he said he's the one that deceives the whole world. But then, the Bible now says he's deceiving the whole world, but now he narrowed his deception to the church. He narrowed his attack to the church. He started with the whole world in chapter 9. You see it there. And then when he gets to 10, he's now not dealing with the whole world. He's now dealing with the church. He said the accuser of the brethren, not the accuser of the whole world. He's first target the whole world, but he's particularly looking at a set of people called the church. He said, this one, these are the ones I'm targeting. My main concentration is on these people. My attack, my specific laser, whatever, is on these guys called the church. Yes, I'm doing something in the whole world, but my laser focus is on this group of people. Question why? And then why is it that he feels the need to do this attack morning and evening? Why is it that his major concentration is deception? And when he comes to the church, the Bible says he does it well morning and evening. He's telling you that the main problem is this deception. The main problem is an attack on your thinking process. Just like what Pastor Shen with us. The first son had a thinking problem. There was an attack on his mindset. Everything belonged to him. 
but he didn't know. And let me tell you how the things of the spirit are. Hmm? Nothing is yours until you understand it. Even if that thing belongs to you, you will never have access to it until revelation comes. It won't happen to you. It might become yours, but until light comes. You see all these things we are saying. Hmm? The problem is not that you don't have money. The problem is not that your grandmother in the village. The problem is not an ancestral cause. The problem is lack of light. Let me explain something to you, what Jesus said. Matthew 22, Jesus said, you don't have two problems. The main problem is one thing. And let me tell you what the enemy has done. He's done an applaudable job. If I want to sit and think about it, I'm like, this man, we should even clap for you. Do you know what he has done? He has made us lose focus. He has made us think the problem is something else. He doesn't want you to know what the real problem is because he knows if you know what the real problem is, you will deal with the real problem. So what he does is he knows what the real problem is he knows the real problem is lack of revelation. He knows the real problem is lack of light. But he'll make you think the real problem is your grandmother in the village. So you are fighting her. He'll make you think the real problem is that there is no money in the economy. So you are running after that one. He makes you think the main problem is that there is sickness everywhere. He'll make you think the real problem is every single thing except what the problem is. He doesn't want you to know that the problem is just that you lack revelation. That's all. If somebody is sick or somebody is harassed by Satan, hmm, those things are not the problem. What you hear pastor make sentences like, if I'm sick, don't pray for me. He said, don't pray for me. What should you do? He said, just remind me who I am. Because that's the problem. The problem is not that you are sick. The problem is not that you are poor. The problem is not any other thing. The problem is not an ancestral cause. No, it is what? Revelation. So what the enemy has done is make us lose focus. So we are running and chasing after every other thing except what the real problem is. And so Jesus comes in Matthew 22 verse 29 and he said, listen, you have a problem. And he explained what the problem is. Matthew 22, 29, we can take a look at it. If we have the living Bible, great. If not, it is beautiful. But Jesus replied, your mistake, see what it is. He said, your mistake is that you don't know the scripture, one. Number two, you don't know the power of God. He was talking to the Pharisees. He said, there are two problems you have. There are two errors. He said, number one, you don't know the scripture. And when he's saying you don't know the scripture, he's not saying you are not knowledgeable in the scripture. He was talking to the Pharisees. These are the guys that from morning till night, they spend time reading through the Torah, reading through the scripture. So when Jesus said, your problem is that you don't know the scripture. Look at what he says here. He said, but Jesus said, your error is caused by your ignorance of the scripture. He was not talking about the fact that they've not read the scripture. You have read the scripture. That's not the problem. The problem is that there's something Jesus was addressing. He said your error is caused by something. Your sickness, your poverty, your harassment of Satan, whatever it is that is going wrong with you. He said those are not the problem. He said I'm identifying two problems. It is what? Ignorance of the scripture. He was not talking that you don't know the Bible. He didn't say you don't read the Bible. He didn't even say you don't study the Bible. That's not what he was talking about. He said you don't have light. You don't have revelation. You are reading the Bible. You are seeing the words. But it's not making sense to you. So what you should go after is not the healing. What you should go after is not the deliverance. What you should go after is not the money. What you should go after is light. Is revelation. The moment revelation comes, that sickness on his own will melt. One day my husband asked me a question. He said, what if somebody comes to this house and says to you, Back out of this house. This is my house. Will you have a conversation with the person? I said no. Because some years ago, I kept on hearing, you are going to die, you are going to die, you are going to die. So I told him, and I'll hear, you are going to die. Then I'll hear, don't tell your husband. So I told him, he said, let me just ask you a simple question. What if somebody comes to this house, knocks on the door, and says, this is my house. I want you to pack out because I want to pack into this house. Are you going to have a conversation with the person? I said, no. He said, why? I said, because the house belongs to me. I know. He said, what if the person said, no, this man is my husband. Will you be arguing with the person? I said, no. He said, why? I said, I, I know who my husband is. I know my house. 
He said that is the exact same way. The devil does not own your life. He cannot dictate when to take your life and when to give you life. All you need is a revelation of who owns your life. From that day, he said it. That was the end of the voices. He just died a natural death. It's just light. It's just revelation. Sicknesses drop off you the moment light and revelation comes. So what the devil has done is he has put your attention on everything else. You are praying about everything else, fasting about everything else. Why you should be asking, Lord, give me light. Give me revelation, not just the knowledge of the scripture. The other one, he said, you don't know the power of God. You've seen it, but you don't know the power. You don't know what this power can do. You do not have light about the power that you carry. How can I be carrying God on my inside? And yet, I'm subjected to the forces and the elements. So Jesus said, you don't have revelation. You don't have light in this area. What do you think Paul was asking when he said in Philippians chapter 3 verse 9? He said that I may know him. What was he asking for? What was he saying? Give me revelation, Lord. I want to have a revelation of who Jesus is. I want to have a revelation of what he has done. Let's look at that scripture. See, he said, I no longer count. He said, I'm become one with him. Okay. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteous, which is the word of God. Verse 10. See what he's praying. He said that I may know him. One is the same problem that Jesus identified in Matthew 22. He said, one, that I may know him. He's not talking about just knowing Jesus. Give me light. If I know who this man is, Lord, give me light. This is his prayer point. This was his focus. He said, and the power of, you, of his resurrection. So he was saying, I want to have light in this area. I want to have revelation in this area. Then to know God and then the power of his resurrection. He's talking about the Holy Ghost. I want to understand what I carry. This is what I want light on. Let me tell you something about God. James 1 21 I believe. When God wants to give you anything hmm, he leaves the position let's look at 17. He leaves the position of Father, God, God blah 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 all of those things. He takes a particular position. See what it is. Whatever is good and perfect comes down to us from God our Father who created all lies. Let's look at it from the King James Version. It captures it better there. Every word good and perfect gift comes from who? From above. Right? And coming from who? The Father of what? Light. So when God wants to give you something, he sits on the throne. He assumes a position called what? The Father of light. If that light does not come, if that revelation does not come, that thing can be yours, but you won't have access to it. Simply because you don't have light. Simply because you don't have revelation. What do you think was the audacity of Apostle Paul? Excuse me. Acts chapter 28, the Bible tells us something. He says, a viper, you know the story, Acts 28, 1, 2, 3. A viper, a viper, a viper, how do I describe a viper? A really poisonous snake. It bites a man. The Bible says he did not pray. He did not fast. He did not shout. That viper attached himself to his hand. And the Bible says he simply shook it off. You know what it means that the snake fasted in his hand? He put his fangs in and emptied all the venom inside of him. How come that venom Biology proves that venom will kill you. Experience proves that venom will kill you. Science proves that venom will kill you. How come this same venom didn't touch this man? How come he didn't pray? Simple. He had light. He had a revelation. That's why Apostle Paul said, I stopped knowing any man after the flesh, including myself. If you look at yourself after the flesh, let's look at that scripture, First Corinthians chapter 5. If you look at yourself after the flesh, you'll be deceived. You think you are a normal man. You think you are the same. I was telling them yesterday, I says here, when somebody comes to give his life to Jesus, he comes to the altar, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, come into my, come into my, be my Lord, blah, blah, blah. You make all of those prayers. You think the person that goes to sit down is the same. He's not the same. Something has changed. He's a new creation person. The old man can be affected by venom. The old man can be affected by sickness. The old man can be affected by demonic entities. But not this new creature. 
They say he's a new creature. Something else has occurred in the inside of the man. On the outside is the same. But on the inside, something has changed. But that man needs to realize it. If he does not realize it, what happens to the old creation will still happen to him. Look at the scripture. He said, therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. We'll read this and we'll read NLT version. He said, even though we have known Christ according to the flesh, we now know him. We don't know him like that anymore. Let's look at how he puts it in NLT. He says, so we have stopped evaluating others from a human point. Stop evaluating yourself from a human point. You know what it means to evaluate yourself from a human point? You think we're all the same. You see that man that a snake beat, hmm? that died. You think you and that man are the same. No, you are not the same. Is it not Jesus that said, you would drink deadly things, it will not affect you. Is it not Jesus, the same faith you used to believe Jesus entered your heart. Is it not the same Jesus that said what? Serpents and scorpions, you're going to tread upon them. Is it not the same one? How come he's working for Paul, he's not working for you? The only difference between you and Paul is just your prayer point. Paul said that I may know him. Lord, give me revelation. Give me light in this area. The moment revelation of who you are comes, the case is over. You don't need any extra prayer. The prayer, Paul prayed, God answered. So that's why. How come? Is it that God loves him differently from you? No. Is it that God just said, okay, I'm going to anoint Apostle Paul differently? No. Just one thing revelation light of who you are is called God has put all things under your authority you know if I say now they say it's because it's red no the same authority that we have the same one I have the same one pastor has the same one you have the only difference is light that's all what makes the difference between one man and the other what makes the difference between why one demon will come out and the other will not come out? It's just light. The way God explained it to me, he says, see. He said, let me explain what authority is to you. And I've shared it before. I'm going to share it again because this is the example, the, the word picture. If you employ a staff, can you sack the staff at will? Yes, I can sack the staff. Will the staff say, no, I'm not going? No. Why? I said, because I have authority over the staff. He said, exactly. You have authority over Satan. Satan knows. The problem is, do you know? You have been given authority over sickness. Sickness knows. The problem is, do you know? And when you don't know, sickness knows. When you don't have light, when you don't have revelation, sickness knows. See, if you don't use your authority because you don't have revelation, you will suffer for nothing. I was sharing my husband yesterday. When I came back, I just came back from Italy. I was in a town called Florence. And then they started sending, um, what do you call this thing? Storm alert. They were sending storm alert. When you pick your phone, they were doing storm alert. Storm alert in the particular place I was. I was in a place called Florence, Tuscany in Florence. So they kept on sending storm alert. They said there will be major storm. Yes, you know, this is not this kind of Nigerian storm. They say a major storm is gathering. For three days before that, they kept on showing it. At a point, the day before, that was, that was supposed to travel. That was, I think, on a Tuesday. The day I was supposed to travel by, they said, the day before, that was on Monday, they now turned it to red. Red alert. Everybody be careful there's going to be a major storm be ready for changes, be ready for delay everybody be careful at a point, they now got to a point they said it's going to pick up that on, the, on that Tuesday, it's going to pick up by 11, it will start gathering momentum he said by 12 noon that will be the peak of the storm that the storm will be at its highest and then after some time they brought another one they now pinpointed the exact place where the storm will be, will be very intense I looked at it, it's the exact place I was and I was supposed to travel that day <laughs> they said get ready for delay so any delay you experience, don't worry it's part of it, I say you and who is doing delay you, ha, me delay I'm going back to Nigeria on that day because I was supposed to fly from Florence to Paris and from Paris to Lagos so in the night, they see sent storm warning, storm warning, red was beeping. If you look at your phone, everything was there. I got up about 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. I went back to this scripture. I read it. It was the scripture on my phone. I went back. God has put everything under the authority of Christ. 
and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And I am part of the church. I started looking at it until like in Revelation. God did all these things for my benefit. Jesus did not die in vain. He did not collect power from Satan in vain. It is for moments like this. So I got up around 2 or 3 a.m. Got up in the morning. In the name of Jesus. Because the Bible says to us, there are angels in charge of the wind. And they are under God's authority. They control the wind. In the name of Jesus, let the wind be redirected. I redirect the wind out of the way. I shift the storm from Florence to Paris. Let there be clear waves. Let the flight path be clear. I will take off and land peacefully. When I get there, whatever happens, that's their business. But I'm flying peacefully. Meanwhile, my flight is 12 noon. And they kept on beeping. At 12 noon, that will be the peak of the storm. No plane should be in the air by that time. I say, you and who? Spoke shifted the atmosphere. Two hours after that one, I went to the airport. I looked at the weather report. They said the storm has now shifted. It's no more going to happen by 12. It will not happen by 3 in the afternoon. I said, okay. It has now shifted. No problem. We got on the plane. We flew safely, very peacefully, landed in Paris. When I got to Paris, somebody called me that was in Florence. She said, where are you? I said, I'm in Paris. He said, did you travel this morning? I said, yes. He said, what I'm telling you is because the airports have been closed for the next three days. They said, the storm is so bad, no plane can fly. So what happened? The moment my plane took off, they shut down the airport. From that day, they said they will open it again on 30th, maybe three days, airport shut down. So imagine if I had this right and this authority, but I didn't have revelation. Number one, I'll be stranded there. Number two, I'll spend extra money because I'm going to pay for hotel, feeding, all of those things. I'll be frustrated. Is it God that's causing the frustration? No. What's causing the frustration? Light. Revelation of not knowing who you are. So you just sit down. Do you know all the frustration in your life? All the stress in your life is simply because you do not have revelation. Which is why this conference has been said. Because until men rise up and become who they are meant to be, they will never be real men. A real man is not that one that has a lot of money. A real one is not the one that has whatever it is. A real man is the one that understands his or her authority in Christ. Did the Bible tell us Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3? He said, God has blessed us. He's not going to bless us. He has blessed us with what? Every spiritual blessing. Can we read it together? This is NLT. Read it together. Uh-huh. Yes. Do you know what it means you are united with Christ? Even this one, I'm still trying to digest the reality. You know how a husband and wife is, right? You can't separate them. For instance, my husband and I, we are how many? How many are we? In the physical, how many are we? In the spirit, how many are we? When God looks from heaven, how many people does he see? One. Okay. Now, the same way I am united with him is the same way you and Christ are united. When God looks from heaven, when you pray, God doesn't see you. He sees Christ. That's why in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, there's something the Bible said. He said, anyone that is joined to the Lord is what? One spirit with him. You are not two spirits. One spirit. You are married to Christ. You are united with him. So, I said, anything that cannot affect Jesus cannot affect me. Anything that cannot bring Jesus down cannot bring me down. Any sickness that cannot stay on Jesus cannot stay on me. If demons cannot attack Jesus, they can't attack me. They've not yet given birth to that demon. And guess what? It's not because I'm special. It's also for you. The only difference, revelation, light, simple. There was one day some years ago, arm robbers came to our house. They were shooting on the street. I think I've shared it before. They were shooting on the street. I went into a panic. Because they were shooting directly on the wall. Shooting. Wah, 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 wah. And I woke up. I heard the first shot. This was maybe... 15 years ago or so. I heard the first shot. I was like, oh, what was that? I said, me and you were inside this room. You're asking me what is happening. I said, how am I supposed to know? They fired the second one. I said, hey, it's like the arm robber. I said, let us pray. He said, pray what? Ha. He now, the worst part, they were outside though shooting. 
He now got up, went to the bathroom, put on the light. I said, God, if I were dead, at least uh, the light was on. They didn't know whether we were in the house or not. They would just go. This one, he now put on the bathroom light. They would not know that there are people here. He put on the bathroom light, finished, came back. I was there. And you know, speaking in tongues from a place of fear. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm praying. He said, praying what? He said, didn't you see what the Bible says? He giveth his beloved sleep. Did you hear when he said pray? He said, my friend sleep. And he added something. I don't know if you can remember. He said, if I catch you praying. Me, I turned to the wall. I said, Holy Spirit, please don't mind him. It's me. You'll be looking at. He said, I say sleep. There are angels on assignment. I say, ha. God, who sent me? Who? Why? Oh, Lord Jesus. She is a normal person I was married to now. Would have been pining Satan by now. He says, sleep. These people kept shooting from about 1 a.m. to something about 4 or so. They were shooting. He says, sleep. But in the morning, he got up and he made a declaration. He said, the people that were involved in this shooting on this street, I remember I leave, he lifted his hand. He said, I give them 24 hours to repent. If they don't repent, the judgment of God will fall on them. All of them, every single one of them caught and arrested. I give them 24 hours to repent. What's different between me that was afraid and him that slept and made the declaration? What's the difference? Is it that God loves him better than me? What's the difference? Simple, light, revelation. That's the only difference. Guess what? The next day, I went to the police station because we were doing some CSR. I went to the police station to ask them, when do you want us to come and do the painting? Because I spoke to them before they were coming to paint. So I needed to get the dates. So when I got there, I noticed some men lying on the floor. You know Nigerian police, they are mean. You know the hot tamak, Abuja hot sun? They were on the tamak. So I saw some men lying face up, looking at the sun, on bare tamak. So the man was thanking me, oh, thank you so much for what you're coming to do for us, blah, blah, blah. He said, by the way, madam, where do you live? I said, oh, I live in 2-1. He said, really? Okay. He said, robbers came to your area, right? So I said, yes, how do you know? He said, ah, did I see those men outside? I said, yes. He said, they went to rob early this morning at Maraba and they were arrested. I said, how do you know they are the same ones that came to our house? He said, because when they were questioning them, they said they had robbed the night before at 2-1 and they gave the description. That's around where you live. I said, it's not just around where I live. It was my street they were robbing. It's okay. They were arrested early this morning. That was exactly 24 hours after that injunction was given. So this was not the next day. So God actually gave them 24 hours to repent. They didn't repent. The police were empowered to catch them because these words were released in the air. Angels went ahead to carry out that thing. Can I ask you a question? Could I have done that declaration? Would it have worked? So why didn't I do it? What was the difference? Light. Simple. Revelation. The difference is what is called revelation. So the attack on the church is deception. They make you feel you are less than you are. And so the next thing the devil does, the only way, remember what we read in Revelation 12, as I begin to round up, remember what they told us in Revelation 12, 10 and 11. They said, he deceived the whole world, but when he came to the church, there's something else is adding to their deception. The Bible says he's accusing them day and night. Why is he accusing the church day and night? Because the devil understands the scripture that the foundation of the throne of God is righteousness. It is justice. So he goes to make accusation before God. He reports you to God. So that God by himself will punish you. So that God by himself will say, okay, sin has occurred. Therefore, there's nothing else I can do. The protection is lifted. That's why he goes to accuse you. The devil cannot touch you without permission. The realm of the spirit follows a very legalistic way. So that's why he goes to do what? Accuse you morning and night. So the Bible says there's a way they overcame him. They, said they lifted up the banner of the blood of Jesus. This is what they did. That's why Jesus shed his blood. So that whenever there's accusation, so there are many people that they've opened their door to sickness, disease, harassment of Satan because the accusations were through. They got involved in sin. They got involved in all kinds of malpractice from lying to stealing to cheating to one thing or the other and they are not repentant to fornication to masturbation to whatever the name is. And so when the devil goes to make accusation before you, he understands that the foundation of God's throne is righteousness. 
That's how you open the door to the enemy. Two ways. One is by ignorance. You don't know your rights. The second is by sin. Once sin occurs, the gates are open. And then Satan has access to your life, to your health, to your finance, to generational causes, to all kinds of things happening to you. As far back as Old Testament, the Bible says, no incantation against Judah, no divination against Israel. As far back as Old Testament, this thing was happening. How much more the new creation man? The Bible says you are made new. You are a brand new creature. Nobody like you has ever existed. That creature is not subject to sickness. That creature is not subject to disease. I preached it, I think, somewhere uh, last two weeks. Somebody sent me a message. Who her mind has been attacked by Satan? He sent me a message. You know what it is, Pastor Book? She said, ah, This thing you are saying is sounding sweet. He said, But Timothy fell sick. He said, I want to believe you, but you quoted the scripture for me. I said, The person that fell sick, you remember how these apostles were walking? They would walk for days, walk for months, no food, blah, blah, blah. So his body broke down from stress. It's not Satan that put that thing on Timothy. He just broke down from stress. If you hear that I'm sick, know that maybe stress or whatever. If I just sleep maybe an hour or two, whatever, I'm fine. Why? Sickness cannot attack to this body. It's a new creation body. Demons cannot attack. They can't. They know where the fire is. They know where the authority is. They know who their boss is. Question, do you know? I don't know the dreams you're having in the night. I don't know the oppression of darkness. Some of you are stagnated because of an oppression of darkness. That is not the problem. You just don't have revelation. So he gets you in sin. He gets you in pride. He gets you in fornication. He gets you in adultery. He gets you in wanting or the other malice, bitterness, jealousy, anger. The reason he's sponsoring those things. He'll just come one day and sponsor a thought against John. He just sponsored that thought. This Pastor John said he's always feeling important with himself. Have you had those thoughts? He's always feeling important with himself. What does he feel like? The man is a foolish man. Don't mind him. Do you know what? After some time, every single thing will start aligning with him. Maybe you say, this John is a very proud man. Meanwhile, he's not though he's on his own. The next thing, you will start seeing the pride in John. Maybe he's just passing. And somebody greets him. He genuinely did not hear. But he said, didn't I tell you that he's proud? Didn't I tell you? Everything will start lining up. You know why devil is putting that thought in your heart? In your heart? Do you know why he's making you not to forgive people? Do you know why he's making you live in malice? Do you know why you look at pastor and then he becomes a topic of discussion in your house? Because the devil wants the door open so he can have access to you. There is no other way he will have access to you. The financial struggles you're having. What did the Lord say in Haggai chapter 2? This is why I can never lack money or never lack anything. He said, the gold is mine. The silver is mine, says the Lord. Who owns the gold? Who owns the silver? He said, I pull up one, uh, Daniel chapter 4, 17. He said, I lift up one, I pull down another. Even the basis of men, God can lift. The problem, like Pastor Abin shared, is what? Light. There is nothing else God is going to do for you again. Nothing else. Nothing else. Every spiritual blessing has been given to you. Look at what the Bible says. This matter about the decree of the watcher and the demand of the word of the holy ones. To the intent that the living may know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men. That's what God wants to do with your life. He wants to show them in your office. He wants to show them on your street. He wants to show them in the family. My son gave his life to Christ and everybody rejected him. Four years, he didn't go home. They said his salvation, he was crazy, blah, 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 X, Y, Z. This is what God has done in his life. The reason God picked him from the dustbin, picked him from the ground, is what God normally does. He goes and he picks a scattered, confused rat. Come, let me use you as an example. He goes, he picks you. Your life is scattered. Everybody can see your life is scattered. Your life is upside down. Everybody can see you are a confused character. You are poor. You don't have food to eat. Nothing about you is good. God wants everybody to see it. Then he starts the journey. He starts taking one step at a time. When God starts, you still look foolish. When God starts, you still look confused. One year later, on the outside, you look the same. But something is occurring. The length of the journey is dependent on how long it takes God to introduce you to light. 
If it takes God 20 years to introduce you to light, it will take 20 years for the journey. If it takes five years for light to enter, revelation to that who you are. And so the reason he picked him, showcase to his family. I'm going to pick one of you. And I will not pick the first. Because if I pick the first, you say it's because he's the first. If I pick the last, you will say, okay, the last because he's the favorite son. So I will pick the middle. I'll pick the most disadvantaged of them all and I'm going to take him on a journey. Are you people? And it was even God that said, don't give him money for four years. Let me show you what will happen to a man abandoned by his family for four years throughout the period of school. Let me show you what will happen. Let me show you a man who had nothing to eat at the beginning. Let me show you what I do to a man. Let me show you what I do to a man that subjects himself to the service of God. Let me show you what I do. Let me show you. This is what I, this is how I change men. So God picks him takes him on that journey, begins to introduce light so that he will see what has already occurred on the inside not one person here is poor not one not one person here lacks a single thing not one person here is stagnated not one person here has demon that's not the problem, light so for those who have some sort of stagnation, whatever in your life is a simple command I'm going to give because once light has entered, that's all. So this is what God does with every man's life that works with him. He picks you. He says, so that, this is what the watcher, the daughters are angels. He said, by the demand of the Holy One, he said to the intent, in other words, this is the purpose of God, that the living may know that the Most High rules where? In the kingdom of men. God rules, not the president. He said, and gives it to who? whosoever he wills. Excuse me, if you were God, who would you give the kingdom to? People that are living in sin or your own children? Your own sons? Your own daughters? It's only an irresponsible father that will have means and give it to orphans. Your father is not irresponsible. Everything your father owns belongs to you. So this is what he has done. The Bible says to the intent that what? That the, what does God do? He sets up one. He puts another. And the Bible says, he gives it to the basis of men. If God said, I give it to the basis of men, meaning that the limitation God has is not that you are base. If you like, be the smallest. If you like, be the most confused. If you like, be the most stupid on planet Earth. It's not a limitation for God. The only limitation is here. Light. Revelation. One. Second one is sin. I want us to get on our feet tonight. I don't know if you want God to shift something in your life and in your destiny. Because their powers and their forces, their job is to frustrate you from moving ahead. You function on this earth, you function in this life, there will be powers that will say you can never move forward. You can never rise. The only two ways they have, they succeed. One is sin. And I'm going to lead you in repentance. After that, we are going to give quick notice to any power or any demonic entity or whatever it is that is your life, that is your destiny, that is harassing you. If you have a sickness, if you have a disease, whatever it is. Someone came to me, I think it's last week or so, and she was telling me, she said, oh, the doctor said they are suspecting cancer. She told me on a Sunday morning. I said, okay, no problem. I said, cancer they will not find, you're going to go back for the test. One drop of cancer, they will not find. That's that lady, I was that one. I said, one drop of cancer, they will not find. I said, it's a simple command I'm going to give to cancer. Simple command, it's a demon. It's not anything, it's a demon. Responsible. I'm going to just speak to it. It will clear. That one second prayer, spoke to cancer, commanded it to dry end. I said, give it two, three days, go back for the test. She sent me a message, I think two days ago. She said, Rev, they did the scan, they did the check, they checked every single thing, not a drop of cancer. One day, some years ago, I don't know if you remember, they, I went to the hospital for a routine check and then they now said I have fibroid. In fact, the man said there are many. Remember, in Abuja, he said there are many. See me and fibroid. <laughs> they said there are many, they're all over. He said, in fact, the man put it this way, he said, what are you doing about your fibroids? I say, me, fibroids. He said, yes, there are many, they're all over your stomach, there are so many. Wow, what are you doing about it? I said, I'm not aware of it. I said, you have. I went back home, I told my husband, he said, five what? He wasn't, we joined hands in prayer. It wasn't even up to, I don't know whether that prayer was up to two minutes. 
I even forgot all about it. I didn't even refer to it again. A year later, I went back to the same hospital. And I remember, I said, oh, yes, that's true. These people said I have fiber. I said, and it was another person checking me. I think I was pregnant then, they checked. I said, okay, please check for the fiber. I said, fiber, you don't have fiber. I said, but you people said I do. He said, no, they couldn't have told you that. There's not a drop, there's not an ounce. You know why? Fiber cannot stay. It, can't, it wasn't a problem, it wasn't an issue, it wasn't anything. It wasn't anything. We use the power of agreement. If you are married here, eh, there's nothing more powerful than agreement between two people that are united. Nothing more powerful. We just held that as an agreement. That thing can't stay from where, how, why? Hallelujah. So I don't know if you're here, there's a sickness. If they like, let them say the sickness is, I don't even know what they're going to call it, that sickness. You know, we used to look at John G. Lake and we say, wow, John G. Lake, he had bubonic plague. Remember, John G. Lake, there was uh, something called bubonic plague, right? And uh, John, people were dying from it. And John G. Lake would put bubonic plague in his hand and the thing would die in his hand. And I thought it was such a big, I was like, wow, this is what I've been giving. And then COVID season came. We had a meeting. People in that particular hall, I hugged because we're about 40 or so. I hugged everybody minimum of twice because I got a gift for every single person that came there. And then the moment I entered, everybody came one by one by one to hug me. How do you hug people? Tony, I come. This is the kind of interaction I had with everybody there. Were you in that meeting? Do you know the meeting I'm talking about? Okay. So, all right. Oh my goodness. So, you see, there's interaction. Oh my God, how are you? And we hadn't seen for some, how are you? Okay, I did this to every single human being that was in that meeting. Then the second time when I was now giving them the gifts I got for them, the second interaction, guess what? This was happening on a Sunday, I believe. By Monday, the first person called me. He said, I started feeling funny. And I went to check, I have COVID. I said, eh. Second person called me by the next day, I have COVID. That's how the people were having COVID up and down. Not to what did you people hear at any time I had COVID? What happened? I touched that bubonic plague, nothing happened to me. The difference between you and John G. Lake is light. That thing I thought, wow, John G. Lake is anointed special. No, he's not anointed specially, he just has light revelation. I said, Everybody here might have COVID. <laughs> there is, a, I went with Olive, I didn't catch it, Olive did not catch it, nothing. There was one time in my children's school. People were throwing up and falling sick because they gave them polluted rice. Every single child in the school, in fact, they had to shut down school for I think two days. Every single child was stooling and throwing up. Only two children were not affected, but they ate the same rice. Only two people in the whole school, two children were not affected by what was killing other children. Two. One is Daniela, the other one is Olive. Two. What did you people do differently? They were, they, too, they were confused, they were lost as in we don't know, but we know is that we are sisters, we ate the same rice everybody ate, it did not affect us, why? they are under a covering the Bible said the seed of the righteous shall be blessed, preserved and protected, Rahab was saved, but it was not just Rahab her entire family, so today what you are going to do, you are going to be speaking not just for you, but your entire family in the name of Jesus hey, hallelujah, please excuse me who is um, John G? You know John G. Lake, right? Mm -hmm. Or who is the most powerful, most anointed man that you know carries the healing power? Who is the person? Okay, let's say Benny Hinn. You and Benny Hinn, who is more anointed? Who is more anointed? Huh? John, you and him, who is more anointed? You are the same thing. The difference is light. When light comes, it makes the anointing function better. That's why you hear me. Satan, you know I have been given authority over you. Light. The demon is not going because it is me. It's going because of the man that backs me up. It has nothing to do with me. Not one thing. If it's left to me, if they even give me a headache, talk, I've told people many times, if they give me a headache, do I look like I can hear headache? Please look at me. Do I look like I can hear headache once? No. But there is a man who dealt with sickness, disease, infirmity, death, cancer. He said, I've dealt with them. I've given them a final blow. They've not given birth to that demon that can withstand the name of Jesus. 
That's why they said, your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. All thrones, all positions, all power, they respond to the name. The Bible said, not just in this world, but in the world to come. Ephesians chapter 1, not just in this world. So when we call, lift up the name of Jesus, whatever chain, whatever has held you, understand by revelation. Let's read this. Oh, hallelujah. All thrones. Your name. We're going to read this soon. Stands above them all. All the angels cry. Holy. Thank you, Lord. All creation's cry. that says all power just repeat it over and over let all it enter somebody's spirit and position all thrones and dominions your name stands above the all oh, all power and position all thrones and dominions Ephesians chapter 1 verse 21. They put it in some form so that you will always remember. All thrones. All. Thrones of sickness. Thrones of disease. Thrones of ancestral causes. Thrones of generational powers. All dominions. All might. All power. All sickness. All demons. From the beginning to the end, all witches, all wizards, all projections of darkness, all cancer, all of them, they respond to one name. It's not about anybody, it's about the name. We're going to read it in the scripture. We read this and then we read it in NLT version. Oh, hallelujah. Let's read from verse 20 by NLT version. He says that I raised Christ from the dead. Let's even pick it from 17 so you get a full picture of what the man was saying. The moment he had, pick it from 16 so you understand where this came from. He said, okay, let's pick it from 15. Permit us to pick from 15. He said, ever since I heard of what? Your strong faith in the Lord. One, two. And the love for God's people everywhere. So the meaning that the moment mercy got born again, this is the prayer point for them. If you want them to walk in dominion, if you want them to walk in victory, this is what Apostle Paul did. That's when he plants a church two years. Two years. He planted in the whole of Asia Minor. It took him two years for the gospel to cover. This is what he was doing to the people. This is what he did to them. 
He wasn't praying, oh God, give them shoe and pack. Oh God, give them contract. Oh God, give them job. No. He said, I have not stopped thanking God for you, part one. And I pray for you constantly. King James says, I pray every day. What is the prayer point? Asking God for mercy. The glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ to do what? To give you spiritual what? Wisdom and insight. Pause. Let's look at this 17 in King James that will come out to NLT. That the God of our Lord Jesus is prayer point to for new believers. The Father of glory may give unto you what? And what? Revelation. What is he asking in essence? Light. 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 Give them light. Let them know who they are. Because if they don't know who they are, they'll think they are the same. They'll think they are still the old creature. They will not realize that change has occurred. They won't realize that there's been a spiritual revamping. They've changed. The Bible said any man in Christ is a new creature. All things have passed away. The you that demons used to oppress, the you that generational causes used to oppress, is passed away. A new man emerged. In, in, in Romans chapter 6, let's not go the course of time. In Romans chapter 6, the Bible says you died. Mercy, you died. You don't exist. The old man died. Romans 6. They said the old man died. See, let me tell you something. Your old man does not exist. If they go to your village, they can't find him. If they go to the books, they can't find him. That old man is dead. Can we look at it and come back here? Run that quickly. In Romans chapter 6, verse 4. He says he's dead. He's dead. You, with the problem with you, Romans 6, 4. The problem is you is that you think that the old man is still alive. No! Can we pick it from verse 3? Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Know ye not. He said, don't you understand? Don't you know? That so, know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. You died, mercy. The old you that sickness could affect died. You don't exist anymore. The old you, that demonic whatever can harass is dead. The Bible says you are dead. The old man is dead. It does not, they can't find him. The one in existence now is a new man. You better know that new man though. Therefore we were buried with him through baptism. So you died. This is the old you. He said, therefore, we're buried with him through baptism into his death. What does that mean? The day you were baptized inside that water, you died. You died. When they put me inside the water, I died. The Bible says, Christ was raised, as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glory of the Father. He said, even so, we shall also walk in the newness of life. Meaning that when you got out of that water, the Bible says there's a new life. A new life came inside of you. That life is different from the old life. You die. The person that woke up is different. That old creature does not exist. He died. You now got up. Now let me tell you what the Bible says. So the Bible now says, take us to Ephesians chapter 1. Where we last stopped. This is the prayer he was praying. He said, ever since I heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus. And love you have for all people. They had faith though. But he said, there's something you need. He said, I'm not stop thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly. King James said, I pray for you every day. Asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus, to give you a spiritual wisdom and insight. Insight. Insight into what has happened to you. New believer prayer. King James said, revelation. How? That you may grow in your knowledge of God. In other words, you cannot grow in your knowledge of God until light comes. Until revelation comes. That's how men grow. That's how you grow spiritually. You need revelation. That's why the Bible says, Pastor John, the Bible says that the eyes, what Satan does, he has blinded our minds so we can't see the glorious light. So that we know who we are. That your hearts be what? Flooded with what? Help me. Let's read the first time. I pray that your hearts be what? Flooded with light. So that you can do what? Understand. If light does not come, you won't understand. You'll be playing games with Satan. Satan will say, I am not coming out. First time I did deliverance, it was with Pastor David. He said, hey, you come. Command this devil to go out. So me, I, I said, sir. He said, yes, it was faith cleaning. He said, come on, come on, devil. I went to the lady. I said, in the name of Jesus, come out in Jesus' name. 
You know what the demon possessed guy said? He said, by which Jesus are you commanding me? I said, ha. I was confused. I went back to pastor. I said, sir, because he was standing somewhere dead. I said, excuse me, sir. He said, have you finished the deliver? I said, no. That I asked the girl. I said, Satan, come out in Jesus' name. And the girl said, which Jesus are you calling? Because the devil knew I didn't know. So I told pastor. Pastor now said, which Jesus are you calling? I said, Jesus, the son of the living God. The one that, he said, go on, tell that devil. I went back. I said, in the name of Jesus, you foul spirit that Jesus conquered on the cross of Calvary. This is what I He defeated it. I command you now, in the name of Jesus, out. The guy tumbled, went under the power. What happened? The same me that spoke. And the devil had the God to say, by which Jesus. Light came. I went back and spoke to the devil. They left. He said, it is that simple. He said, it is that simple. Light. Revelation. That's all. You didn't increase in power. You only increase in revelation. So, I pray that I have to further with light. So that I can understand the confident hope that God has. God has hope in you. The hope of Lekki is you. The hope of Yaba is you. The hope of your family is not the government, is you. Your family will die of poverty and in penury. Some of you generational causes have been there for years. It will stay there until you arrive. He said God has hope in you. He has given to those he called his holy people. His glorious and his rich and glorious inheritance. He still praying. Verse 19. I also pray. Are you paying attention to this thing? He said, I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe. Is that in Jesus or teaching in Matthew 22? He said, you don't know the scripture and you don't know the power that you have. He said, incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe. There's power. He said, you need prayer to know what you carry. You need prayer to know what you carry. That's why when the aircraft, they said the plane cannot land. They said the landing gear can't come out. Even this one where we're going, they said they gave us a short runway. The man, the white pilot, he said, when I land, he said, he said I don't have a long um, is it runway. He said, I'm going to just drop the plane. He said, please hold tight. I'm going to drop the plane. The other runways are occupied. So they gave me this one. He said, I can't skid. I'm going to drop the plane. I said, if you like, drop the plane. If you like, leave the plane. All I know is that a child of God is on this plane. One that has light. The man came to the airport and he, bah, the plane dropped, bing, 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 bah, everybody shouted. The other one will come out was with Olive. I said, if Jesus is in this plane, what will he do? He said, Jesus will be sleeping. I slept. Why? Light, 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 light. Light came. He said, that raised, I want you to understand the incredible power. He takes revelation. That raised Christ. This same mighty power. Let me tell you, the power that is inside you. The Bible says it is the same power that raised Christ from the dead. Hey, that means I can raise the dead. If that, John, if the same power that raised Jesus from death, I want you to understand, when Jesus was down, all the demons on earth were on him. God forbid the book who dies. Hmm? Will it be all the demons on earth on him? No, because he's not like Jesus. So the one keeping you down is less than one that kept Jesus down. So the Bible is saying, hmm? the same power that was invested in you and I, he says it's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. That's why it's hard to understand. You need prayer. You need the revelation. He said they did that. They raised him from the dead. And then they went and sat him in the place of God's right hand. Where? In the heavenly realms. If you read Ephesians 2, 6, he tells you that is where you are seated. So in the realm of the spirit, you are above all these nonsense witches. They are, you are not mates. Spirit of cancer is not your mate. He's below. He's just revelation. He said now. Somebody say now. 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 Before we read this. Hold this thought. Look at Ephesians 2.6. Then we'll come out to this. So, for he raised us from the dead. Did I tell you that you died? He raised us from the dead along with Christ. And seated us with him. Where? 
in the heavenly realms. Why? We are united with Christ. So this is me and Christ. This is both of us. We are inseparable. So the question is, so where are we seated? Then we'll go back to Ephesians 1. Where are we seated? Watch where you are seated. Where Jesus is seated is where you are seated. Where are you seated in the spirit realm? You are seated where Jesus is seated. That's why I said, what manner of love is this? Why? Why? What is man? Who am I that you give me this kind of authority? He said, now, it's not just he is, I am. So I want us to read it with you, put yourself, and then read it with putting Jesus. Am I correct? Based on Ephesians 2.6. Okay. So now I am. That's how we're going to read it. Can we take it? One, two, three. Now I am far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else. Not only in this world, but in the world to come. So I have eternal victory. My victory is not just on it. Even in the world to come, I have victory. Hey, one manner of love. One manner of love. Listen to me. Oh, if you understand this thing, you will go and stand on the highest building and want to jump. Because you can't contain it. That's why you hear pastor say, I'm looking for Satan to slap him. It's something you understand. You see this thing, above all leader, that's why he said, anyone that is not born again is smelling. It's not because he's rude, it's because it's the scripture. He said, far above every leader. Only if you tell me you are richer than Dangote. He said, Mama Cash, I said, me. And uh, he said, because Dangote doesn't have what you have. You have money in the account, but it's more than that. He said, you command angels at Capoto. He said, your security, they are not human beings. Angelic security. He said, you can speak to storms and they will shift. He said, Dangote cannot do that. Now, let's see where Jesus is. The Bible said, now Jesus is what? Far above what any rule or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also when in the world to come, God has done what put all things excuse me, is sickness part of all things, is stagnation part of all things, is poverty part of all things, generational cause is part of all things, bloodline is a part of all things. That people are dying in your village, they don't get to 40, zip out of all things. That people are poor in your village, they don't rise, zip out of all things. Blindness, zip out of all things. Yes. All things under the authority of who? Christ. And has made him what? Head over all things. For whose benefit? My benefit. For me. For me. For me. The love is too much. Uncle, where is the other? You, I just saw you. See as you are now, the difference, Dada, yeah, come. The difference between your today, where is your brother? Is he Elv, uh, Alvin? The difference between that, I listen to me. The difference, if I like, let me give you $10 billion. Hmm? It will disintegrate back to your level. The only difference between where you are today and where you are going to be tomorrow is what? Who can help him? Light. You are not going to be rich, you are already rich. It's just the manifestation. It's just, okay, Lord, I am already rich. What do I need to now do in the physical? If you don't have light, if you like, do all the business on planet Earth, you see, God will use you as an example. You see that scripture, Daniel 4, 17. As you are serious with God, God will use your example. I'm going to bring them back again, two years down the line. I'm going to show you. So, uh, I can take their picture as they are. They've even improved. You should have, do you have their former picture? <laughs> Because two years down the line, we'll see you pastoring a church wearing suits and talking to people that this is who I used to be. They'll say it's a lie. This is who I used to be. They'll say it's a lie. But look at what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. That's what say, see how far you have brought me. They don't want to say, hey, say, Bube, see how far you have taken me. That will be your story. As you keep following the Lord, going after light, going after revelation, the moment he enters, the physical transition will occur. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So I'm going to issue a command. Simple. Who needs something broken out of their lives tonight? There are three prayers. Number one, prayer of repentance. Where you have sinned, 
where you have broken the hedge, where you have made a mistake, there's blood. Just ask for mercy. Because there are people here, you've put your hand in juju, you've put your hand in drinking, you've put your hand in cocaine, or whatever it is, they call it drugs, ice, all of those things. Some masturbation, some anger, some bitterness, some pride, some adultery. I don't know what it is. But the Bible says, Satan accuses you. But there's blood, there's blood, there's blood. That's the first prayer. The moment you bring the blood and say, Lord, have mercy, forgive me. The moment you bring the blood of Jesus, that thing's taken care of, that thing's taken care of. He said, what amazing grace, what amazing grace. Hi, and I'm a sobre dosha. And if by chance there's anybody here, you are not a child of God. You have not received Jesus as your Lord, as your Savior. This is the time to do that. If you want, you can come to the altar. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I want you to just talk to him. Whether there's sin, some of you lukewarmness or whatever has occurred in your life, just say, Lord, have mercy. But if you're here, you are not born again. I'm not going to take you for granted that you're born again. If there's anybody here that has not received Jesus, this is the time to do that. But this prayer is for every single one of us. Just pray and say, Lord, have mercy. Some have been involved in incest. Some have been involved in raping people. Some have been involved in abortion. Some have been born in one thing or the other. I want you to get it out of the way. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Bring the blood of Jesus. This is how we overcome. Bring the blood of Jesus. Oh, Reda Bakaveno Shataya. Thank you for the blood. As it purges, as it purifies, as it cleanses us. Thank you, my Father. Oh, thank you, Lord. If you're out here, I want you to pray. Say, Lord, have mercy. Forgive me for my sins. Punch me with the blood of Jesus. Tell him to forgive you. He will forgive you. Tell him, cleanse me, touch me with the blood. I know that I've done things wrong. Forgive me. Wash me, cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I pray for him. I want you to say after me, Heavenly Father, I have sinned against you and I am sorry. Please forgive me. Wash me with your blood. Make me your child. Write my name in your book in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because I am your child in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to go to the second part of the prayer right now. Now we've gotten that thing out of the way. We're going to break whatever it is. But now you are breaking things not from a beggarly position, from a place of authority, knowing who you are. Knowing who you are. So you are not praying from down up. You are praying from heaven down. Hallelujah. Is somebody understand what I'm saying? Does anybody need something broken up their lives, of their destiny? One thing that is not going according to plan. Whether it's a sickness, a disease, a harassment of Satan. Whatever it is, you are like that. I want you to lift your hand right now. Look at what the scripture said. The Bible said, now he is far above any rule, any authority. And then the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 2, 8, 9, 10. He said, at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee bows. Verse 9 said, every knee bows. So we're going to mention the name of Jesus. You're going to do this by yourself. I'm going to shout the name of Jesus one time, second time, third time. Whatever it is that is wrong, whether it's a sickness about to dissolve, the person that came in here with a lump is about to go, that lump will disappear and melt. In the name of Jesus, that person has been harassed by Satan. Your destiny, you know that what is keeping you down is not physical, that is spiritual. I'm about to issue a command to the powers of darkness. Every chain goes, whatever it is that has held you in the past, in the next one, two seconds, it goes. Are you ready for freedom tonight? Are you ready for freedom tonight? Oh, Father, we thank you. Just go ahead. Oh, just pray in the Holy Ghost if you can. Kendo Shatan de Bede Rabado Satayabada. I'm about to issue a command to the powers of darkness. All thrones and positions, your name. Your name. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of sickness, the spirit of disease, the spirit of infirmity. I command you now, in the name of Jesus, loose your hold of these ones and go now in the name of Jesus. 
wherever there's an installation of sickness and disease, I command you in the name of Jesus. Be uprooted and go now in the name of Jesus. Tumor dissolve now in the name of Jesus. Swelling and lump dissolve in the name of Jesus. Back condition be healed in the name of Jesus. Throat condition be healed in the name of Jesus. Migraine be healed in the name of Jesus. Your things are always getting missing. In the name of Jesus. You put in for things. It's always getting missing. I don't know who you are. Your things are always getting missing mysteriously. In the name of Jesus. I reverse that situation. In the name of Jesus. Everyone under a curse. Everyone that's been bound by the powers of darkness. Anyone under satanic bondage. In the name of Jesus. I command the chains break in the name of Jesus. I command the chains break in the name of Jesus. Whatever is in your life that was not planted by the Lord. I command it be uprooted in the name of Jesus. Be uprooted in the name of Jesus. I declare you free in the name of Jesus. Where witches and wizards have harassed you, I command them to cease now in the name of Jesus. Everything that has gone wrong in your life, I command a restoration in the name of Jesus. I break every chain in the name of Jesus. Every covering of darkness, every signature of the evil one is broken in the name of Jesus. You are set free in the name of Jesus. Every stagnation is broken in the name of Jesus. Rise in the name of Jesus. Rise in the name of Jesus. Nothing can stop you anymore. Hey, if you have something that you're doing that is stagnated, I want you to speak life to it. Speak life, speak life, speak life. Speak life. Speak life. You are the master of creation. Speak life. You are the master of creation. You are a co-creator with God. You are united with Christ. Your words are as powerful as the words of Jesus. Speak life. Anything that you are doing that is stagnation, speak life. Speak life. I speak life to that project. I speak life. If it's your body that is dying, speak life. Anywhere dying in your body, speak life. Speak life. Come on, oh Shada. If it's your marriage, speak life. If it's your business, speak life. And if it's your body, speak life. Come on, Anamasata. If it's your prayer life, speak life. Tell your prayer life to resurrect. Tell your prayer life to resurrect. Come on, Anama. If it's your work with God, resurrect. Speak revival. Speak revival. Say revive. And call her. My soul be revived. My spirit be revived. Come and never cuddle. You are no more under oppression. You are a creator with Jesus. Speak life. Call for things. The Bible said, God, call out the things that be not as though they are. Begin to call things that be not. You are a creator. Call the things that be not. Call them forth. I turn the pages of your life. I turn the pages of your life. I speak under the authority of the Most High God. The old chapter is closed. A new chapter begins in the name of Jesus. A new chapter in your life. A new chapter in your work with God. A real man is arising. No more poverty. No more sickness. No more disease. No more failure. In the name of Jesus. Arise. 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 You are a creator. You are a creator with God Almighty. Create. The Bible said God calls the things that be not as though they are. What do you need to comfort? Speak. No more harassment of Satan. Now pray light. Light, Lord, light, light. Say, Lord, flood me with light. Flood me with light. 
flood me with light revelation 